Welcome to Electron Line. I think now we're ready for a summary before we go on to some more complex things about the Maclaurin series. Let's do a summary of what we've learned so far. Some of the more common series that you may run into and some of the commonalities in which they are expressed. Starting with the very first one that we had, 1 over 1 minus x can be expressed as the infinite sum from n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n power, which is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed. Of course, that only works when x is equal to 1 or less, or I should say between negative 1 and 1 is a better way to express that. So the radius of convergence is 1 in that case. For large values of x, that's of course not going to work. The next one is e to the x. Even though there seems to be a lot of difference between these two functions, notice that their expressions are very similar. Here we have x to the n, there we have x to the n divided by n factorial. So we have 1 plus x over 1 factorial plus x squared over 2 factorial and so forth. Notice because the factorials in the denominator grow much faster than the function in the numerator or the expression in the numerator, then we have a radius conversion equal to infinity, which means this is valid for any value of x. Now the sine of x is similar to what we have over here, except we skip every other term. So we don't have the first term, we don't have the second term, the fourth term, and so forth. So notice we only have odd exponents of x. To accomplish that, and also of course the alternating signs, we have a minus 1 to the n power times x to the 2n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1 factorial. Starting with n equals 0, notice that ends up with um, minus 1 to the 0 power, which is 1, times x to the first power divided by 1 factorial, so end up with x. The third term, now n equals 1, you have x to the third power divided by 3 factorial, and then x to the fifth power divided by 5 factorial with the alternating signs. For the cosine, we don't have the 2n plus 1, we simply have the 2n, we still alternate terms because n equals 0 to infinity. When you have 2n in the exponent, you skip every other term. But notice that we start from 1 instead of an x, and the signs also alternate. For the arctangent of x, notice that we have the minus 1 to the n power because the signs alternate. But here we have x to the 2n plus 1 in the numerator, which looks just like the sine. And that makes a lot of sense because sine and tangent are very related. But in the denominator, instead of having 2n plus 1 factorial, we simply have 2n plus 1. So you see that the denominator is 3, 5, 7, and so forth. But all three functions, sine, cosine, and arctangent, well, let's see here. For the sine and the cosine, the radius of convergence is infinity. In other words, we can plug in any value for x because, of course, they're what we call rotating functions. Every time we go through 360 degrees or 2 pi radians, we start over again. So we essentially can plug in any value for x, and the infinite series will give you the right value for the sine or the cosine. But for the arctangent, we can do that because, of course, we realize that for angles greater than 45 degrees, the arctangent becomes greater than 1, and then, it then, of course, there is no convergence at that point. So you want to make sure that the values you use in here for x between negative 1 and 1. Now, the natural, the natural log of 1 plus x can be written as follows. Again, we have the alternating signs. Notice we don't skip any terms, so we don't have a 2n factor in the numerator. So we have x to the n power, so we have x, x squared, x cubed, x fourth, so forth. We don't start at n equals 0. Of course, the problem with that is that natural log of 1 is equal to 0, so we don't want to have that first term in there. We start with n equals 1, and we have alternating signs as well, and we divide by n, not n factorial. So we have the same thing as we have over here. e to the x is x to the n divided by n factorial. Here it's x to the n divided by n, because it's a natural log instead of e to the x. That requires us to have a radius of conversions of 1 as well. And finally, the binomial expansion, the one that we just saw in the, in the last few videos, 1 plus x to the k power, we can write it in a compact form like this, which can be written out as the infinite series here. Again, we expect the value of x to be between negative 1 and 1. The radius of convergence is equal to 1. So a nice little summary of the various infinite series expressions that we have for some very, very, very common functions. And when you put them side by side like this, you have a better way of 
seeing the relationship between them and seeing how the functions actually do make sense when you see the infinite expansion. And that's how it's done.